I'm trying to speak for all these idiots who actually follow you. Like, I don't get why people follow you. Asalaamu As Alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. Smile to Jannah. I don't know if you guys are aware but there is a clip that's been going and circulating quite a bit around the Muslim circles and that clip is to do with an Instagram live that Mufti Menk did with a sister. It's probably one of the most concerning clips that I've seen in a long time. Now ideally I wouldn't be discussing it but she is not the only one that has that sort of approach that I've seen. I see people like that in the comments, DMing me, you know, speaking to other brothers that are in the da'wah and unfortunately it is somewhat of a growing trend. Let's have a look. I'm trying to speak for all these idiots who actually follow you. Like I don't get why people follow you when and you're mixing truth with falsehood. You're literally mixing truth with falsehood. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, yeah, verily I have only been sent to perfect righteous character. If the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was watching that conversation, would he say yes? Yes, his Akida's dodgy, yes, yes, yeah, good you spoke to him like that in front of thousands of people that mashallah he has helped come back on the deen, he's literally saved them from the hellfire with the permission of Allah. Yeah, go and slam him, call his people idiots, yeah that's it. That's, that's going to help them stay on the deal. They killed 3,000 people but these are the things you don't see in the I news because of deceptive sheikhs like yourself. Well, you I, come I on and blabber but we see no action. Abu Nu'aim reported that Sufyan Thawri rahimahullah said, If a man intended to write down the hadith, he would study good manners and worship for 20 years before doing so. Studying manners. This is a concept that's alien to us. In fact, forget studying manners, just manners. You know who else? You know who else knows more than you? Iblis knows more than you, but yet he chose to be arrogant. Now, now look at how you're comparing me with Iblis. That goes to show a lot about the fact because that my you're literally you're literally bragging about your knowledge. You're out here telling me how much knowledge you know. Ibn al Mubarak, rahimahullah, said to the people of Hadith, "You are in greater need of a little manners than a great deal of knowledge." And then he went on to say, I sought manners for 30 years and I sought knowledge for 20 years. The righteous predecessors would seek manners and then seek knowledge. Can I talk? You, I think you had enough time to talk. Malik bin Anas rahimahullah said, learn good manners before seeking knowledge. And then he goes on to say, my mother would dress me up and say to me, go to Sheikh Rabia and learn from his manners before his knowledge. Like subhanAllah, don't you fear Allah? Don't you yes. fear Allah? Like people look up to you and you're setting up a bad example. Umar an says, acquire knowledge and teach people. All right, cool. Yeah, that's what, that's what she was doing. Learn along with it dignity and tranquility and humility for those who teach you and humility for those whom you teach. Alright guys, before we begin, it's important to establish the area, yeah, the area that a person is in. If a scholar is in the Indo-Pak subcontinent, their da'wah, their approach will be different. If a person is in, say, their da'wah is based in the, the English-speaking nations like US, UK, Canada, their da'wah will be different because the issues that they are tackling, the temperaments of the people, the cultures they're tackling are different. And you guys have to realize that here, especially now in the West, I don't think the East is immune from this, but here in the West, it's a free for all. Yeah, you got little girls going around, seven year old girls with pants up to here, up to here. Drugs, standard. Disrespect their parents, standard, swearing, standard, sexualization, you know, prostitution, pornography, you name it, that vice is prevalent. In fact that the glitter and the glamour of the dunya has become so appealing that many of the people of knowledge find it very difficult to pull the youth back. 
You had Mufti Menk, who even the non-practicing folk, they wanted to go and listen to him. I am not saying for a second that they are immune from mistakes and they haven't made mistakes. I'm not defending their mistakes. Like I have defended Dr. Zakir Naik, I've defended Mulan Tariq Jamil, I'm defending Mufti Menk, not their stance in matters, but their overall mission. Because there are many people who have started practicing because of these people. If you openly start berating them, number one, it's, it shows how narrow-minded and selfish you are. And number two, you haven't understood the religion. Yes, have difference, yeah, ikhtilaf. But the, on the one hand, you have ikhtilaf and then you have mukhalifat. Yeah, ikhtilaf is difference of opinion. Mukhalifat and mukhalifa is enmity. The people of knowledge would have difference of opinion amongst each other, but they wouldn't have enmity. And that's the problem that we have. In fact, the scholar quite profoundly said the only place in which there is no difference of opinion is in a place where the people are filled with ignorant people or dishonest people. Yeah, so people that don't even have enough knowledge to realize and understand the differences, or they're just not voicing their differences. Angels, there's narrations of angels having difference of opinion when coming to retrieve the soul of somebody. There's Prophet Sulaiman Alaihissalam, Dawood Alaihissalam, who had a difference of opinion. You had Sahaba who had differences of opinion. So these differences of opinion, okay, cool, they exist. I know what you're thinking. Some people say, yeah, but this is difference of opinion with regards to Aqidah. All right, cool. You may think so. Yeah, due to the limited knowledge that you have. But still, the laws of etiquette still apply to you as well, bro. No, but they're Ahlul Bid'ah. Oh, they are, you know, not from my particular sect that has two and a half people that are going to Jannah. <laughs> <laughs> when Musa alayhi salam was told to give da'wah to Fir'aun, Allah told him, speak to him nicely. This is a non-Muslim right here who used to say stuff like I am your Lord Most High and Allah's asking Musa Islam to speak to him gently. Forget this guy's aqeedah, his aqeedah is that he's God. <laughs> you got differences? No problem, you will have differences. Voice them, ask them. When you start calling people idiots, stupid and speaking down to people that let's face it, you are not even the dust on their shoes. Let's be realistic, 85% of the religion has no differences. Which sect doesn't talk about praying salah, giving zakah, psalm, hajj? Every sect agrees we must respect our parents. Every sect agrees with halal and haram. Every sect agrees with the sanctity of the Kaaba. But we feel so compelled to talk about those very things that are different amongst us. I defend Dr. Zakhani. Are you a Wabi? Are you a Wahhabi guy? Then I'm uh, defend Murat Are you are you the Bandi? Are you the Bandi guy? Like what's wrong with you? Are you wearing blinkers? Are you not watching what's happening around the globe? Do you really think they asked the sex before they bombed the country? Do you really think they care about the sect that you're in? How deluded are you, mate? So many people have been put off the dean because of such individuals. They're like flies who just sit on crap. If you are going to your circles and sitting with your ulama and by the end of that gathering, if your iman hasn't increased, rather your hate for particular individuals within the ummah has increased, then don't go to that gathering again. If you are in a group that's based upon hate, whether it's hate of sahaba, whether it's hate of the imams, whether it's hate of scholars, no. Something that's based upon hate can never thrive. If somebody's teaching you to hate people and you're out there condemning Muslim, non-Muslim, Muslim, a kuffar wabi, a Sufi guy. Give me a break. No individual is free from fault. Yeah, we all make mistakes, but how you address those mistakes is very important, especially in this day and age where people are already put off religion. Until next time, guys. <sighs> Assalamu alaikum.